The following is a paid program sponsored by the friends and partners of Faith Life Now. Today on Drenda. Are you struggling with money? Is that the major reason you and your husband are fighting? There's a lot of financial stress going on in people's lives. I used to live that life. I know what it's like. I've been there. Today on Drenda, we're going to be fixing your money thing. You don't want to go away. a treat for you today. I have my favorite financial expert and the person <laughs> I work walk through the worst financial situations with early on in our marriage, but we learned a lot of lessons we're going to share with you today. Would you please welcome with me my favorite person, my best friend, Gary Cassie. <laughs> hey. Thanks, oh, I love you. Love you. Gary, it's great to have you on the program. I feel yes. a little distant across the table from you, but oh, yeah. we had our early days of financial mess, right? Yes. Now, you, <laughs> you are a financial planner, and you do uh, conferences all over the world. You've written books on finances yeah. and an expert on this area. So we're going to share, though, today what we learned through our experiences, through our story. Is that all right with you? I've got yeah. a lot of emails from women crying out, saying things like, my husband and I are on the opposite sides about money. It has gotten to the point that we both have separate accounts. We'll talk mm -hmm. about okay. that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another uh, that says, I'm beside myself with the path that my husband and I have taken with our finances. He has always been a good provider, but I'm the one that pays the bills, decides what we pay and what we don't pay. Mm -hmm. We're living paycheck to paycheck, and I'm becoming bitter. We'll be talking okay. about those. But first of all, Gary, I think it would help everyone to just see where we came from, see a little bit about our story, because it's easy to look at people's lives and think, uh, you know, there's success there. They're doing really well. It was not always that way. And I want to <laughs> encourage you. There's principles and there's choices that you can make. We're going to share today that will make the difference in your story. Don't quit. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your finances. There are answers, and we're going to get them today. Let's go and see a little bit of our financial history. Setting the stage for their early years of marriage, Gary and Drenda Cassie started down a financial slippery slope. Borrowing money to get married, they were unaware of how that foundation of debt would affect the coming years. Though a shy person, Gary landed a job selling life insurance, which meant working on commissions and only getting paid when he made a sale. Although he tried hard to conquer his fear and build a successful business, there just wasn't ever enough income to pay the bills and get ahead. And so the Cassis were forced to charge and borrow to provide for their growing family. In sales, it said, tomorrow will be better than today. So they had hopes to pay it back tomorrow, but that day never came. The Cassis survived on credit cards, bouncing checks, and daily begging for mercy when the bill collectors and attorneys called their home, looking for payment on delinquent accounts. Every bill they had stayed in the late category, and they felt trapped, quickly running out of options. When it became impossible to make the payments on one credit card, Drenda and Gary opened new accounts to borrow from, pushing them down the slope even faster. Year after year, as their family continued to grow, they got further and further behind, with no apparent end in sight. In fact, their borrowing cycle continued to accelerate. Bone-crushing stress and intense feelings of failure caused Gary to experience panic attacks, panic attacks. Paralysis, paralysis, and heart palpitations. palpitations. The doctors even put him on antidepressant medications. 
living in nonstop fear. fear. Over a period of nine years, the Cassis accumulated more debt than they knew how to pay. That debt included 10 maxed out credit cards, maxed out, three finance company loans, $13,000 in back taxes, more than $26,000 owed to relatives, a home mortgage, and two car loans, both for rusted out vehicles worth much less than what they owed on them. There were even judgments and liens filed against them. It seemed Drenda and Gary had nowhere to turn. Nowhere to turn. Sick, broke, and desperate. desperate. It was then that they reached the end of their rope. That's where we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, God brought us out of those situations through some financial principles, practical principles, prayer, and turning it all over to him. Gary, yes, I don't know about yes, you, but yes. I remember those days very well. Oh, I do. What I was were you feeling? for tissue here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was reliving that as well. Yeah. What were you feeling back then? I know I was feeling it's, stressed. It's stress is a good word. Yeah. Panic. You know, you have little babies to feed, no food. You know, you don't see any future. Um, I mean, there's nothing out in front of you that says really it's going to change. You're already working as hard as you can. Right. And so uh, really hopelessness was, uh, you had to fight that. Right. We went on to go get out of debt, pay mm -hmm. off all of that debt, save money, uh, yes. pay cash for land. Um, but today I want to help folks understand, I know we built three companies together that succeeded yes. 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 and then a ministry together. But I want folks to understand, sometimes people look at the final and they see what they see now in their life and they don't know there was a price you paid to get there. They don't understand that there are decisions you make yes. and there's consequences and choices. Yes, yes. And maybe you find yourself today in a financial mess. You find yourself, uh, you've made some bad choices, but it's not too late. It wasn't too late for us either. Was it's never it? too late. Never so tell too us late. how we do that. Well, you have to start with the kingdom of God because the world has no answers except debt. Right. And really it came to a, a, a head uh, the, the day the attorney called. Uh, we were already maxed out on everything. Everything was 120 days later canceled. We had no credit cards left. We'd already borrowed 20 some, $26,000 from relatives. They didn't answer the phone when we called. You know, and we weren't trying to be negligent. Yeah. No, no, we were We working were just hard. trying. Yeah. We, were we were working, working hard. and the harder we worked, it seemed like the more behind yeah. we got. Trying to get out and, of debt. We understood debt yes, wasn't good, yes. but we didn't know what else to do. And we were already Christians. Mm -hmm. we, we, we loved God, loved the Word of God. But there's a big difference of going to church as an event on your calendar and actually letting Jesus be Lord and letting these words mm -hmm. dictate how you live life. And we came to that moment when we were at the very bottom and the attorney called and filing lawsuits and people were, you know, is, there's nothing left. And I remember going upstairs to my, uh, our bedroom there and, and just cried out to the Lord and said, you know, what, can you tell me what is going on? And he answered me uh, in Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And I said, well, I don't have those. And he said, right, because you're doing things the way everyone else does things. You've never taken time to learn how to tap into those riches. Right. And, of course, I, you know, we didn't know how, that, how to do that. But I remember I came right down the steps, grabbed your hand. I remember the exact spot there at the kitchen table at the door there. And we made a commitment. Okay, Lord, you've got to show us. What, is, what do you mean the kingdom? Mm -hmm. And we made a commitment to stop using debt. The Lord said, you know, you trust in debt. You use debt for everything. And, you, you know, you hope I'll pay it off, help you pay it off, you know. And uh, that began the journey. Our whole life changed at that moment. Yes, I can remember thinking, God, where are you? What's yes. going on? But really, in, in reality, we didn't know that debt, first of all, was a trap. And then once you get in the trap, you don't know how to get out of the trap. Right. You don't know how to fix the money thing. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. And there's some practical things with the spiritual things. We want to share both yeah. of those. I know you do that in your book, Fixing right, the Money Thing. Right. You share uh, that there are practical choices that you make. But I remember feeling hopeless. Yeah. And as a mom with small children, uh, there was one point where I felt like I'm going to have to go out and get a job. Yeah, I can't stay here with yeah. these kids. Uh, a, lot you know. of women, well, a lot of women watching our show are in that situation right. where they want to stay home with their kids, but financially, they don't, like, oh, yeah. they don't yeah. look yeah. like it's a Yeah, and like, like women here saying, I'm paying the bills. I started yeah. out paying the bills in our family as well. I yeah. think most yeah. women pay the bills. And so then we feel the stress, the pressure, 
right. and it affects the marriage because then yes. you look at your husband and you're like, you know, if yeah. you can't get this done, I'm going to get it done. And I remember then feeling a lot of anger towards you, and it wasn't really your fault. You felt like I spent too much. I felt like you didn't make well, enough. Well, I take it back. <laughs> it was my fault. I'm the head. And so I, I, I challenge you on that. I am the head. But here is the, here is the deal. Jesus taught in Luke uh, chapter uh, 12. He says this, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So what you go to to meet the need, what you trust in, mm -hmm. what we found, God said to us, change allegiance. We trusted in the earth system, the debt system. That's all we ever learned. He was saying his kingdom is a whole other system that we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But he was saying, it says, where your treasure. Now, if your treasure is in the heaven system, the, the kingdom system, then when you have a need or pressure, you're going to go to that system. You're going to grab out of that system. Mm -hmm. But if your system's in the earth system, you're going to go to that system because that's where you've developed your confidence at, you see. Right. If you have mm -hmm. confidence in the visa card, that's what you're going to run to. Right. And the Lord said, let's stop that. Let me show you how it really works. And we changed allegiance, governments, if you will. And that's how things began to change. It did and begin even to the change. earth system is conventional wisdom. It's what yes. we're taught all of our yeah. lives. It's the fear-based system of, oh my gosh, I don't have enough. Let's use a credit card. Right. we got to eat. Right. Type of and eventually thing. you run out of credit cards. <laughs> right. And we did that. Yes. You can't keep borrowing and borrow on one credit card to pay off another credit card to pay off another one. That's right. Eventually that system, uh, it broke down for us because it's a false system. It doesn't work. Well, that's slavery. So that is you, slavery. You can't go down that road. Right. You give up freedom, and it's not what God has. Right. So we, we kind of, we didn't know what that meant. And God had to, we said, okay, teach us. Mm -hmm. I guarantee anyone that cries out on, to him and says, teach yes, me, he, he will. will teach us. Right. But Jesus said, speaking about worry, about things, specifically, he's talking about things of life. He said, don't worry about the food you eat, about the clothes you wear, for your father knows you have need of those things before you ask. And he goes on through that passage there in Matthew, and he says, Seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and, and all, all of these, these things, things shall be added. added. Seek first the kingdom means learn how his kingdom operates. Mm -hmm. And if anyone cries out to him and says, Teach me your kingdom, my goodness, that the Holy Spirit wants to help you understand how that operates. All right, now, Gary, I can hear someone saying, yeah. You know, I need money, Gary. I don't need God. I need money. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yes. <laughs> how would you, what would you say to them? Well, first off, let me ask you a question. Where's money at? It's in the earth. So in, does God have money? In businesses? No, not really. He doesn't have any money. Not really. I mean, he, he, can, he can control, I suppose, but he doesn't have Well, I'll challenge you on that. He doesn't <laughs> have any money, and money's in the hands of men. You're right. It's in You're the right. earth system. And in the You're earth right. system, men right. worship money. They're You're not right. going give to it, give it to exactly. you because you ask for it, right? Exactly. So how Everybody's is, out for themselves. That's right. So how is God going to get our listener, our viewer, we, they have to know how that transfers. Right. See, God has already given us all things that pertains yes. to life in, in Second Peter. Yes. But that's a heavenly bank account, if you will. How do we access that? That right. Right. is the key. That's what we need to know. Yeah. Exactly. And so in our case, you know, we had to create wealth. In most cases, when people need money, all God can do is direct them to capture it hmm. or create it. He doesn't have money. He can't take it from someone. He can't counterfeit it. That's illegal. Okay. All he can do, you know, uh, Peter had need of money. He said, go catch a fish. There's a gold coin in his mouth because that gold coin was not being occupied by anyone on the earth realm. In other words, it wasn't right. under someone's dominion. Right. It was loose. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, he'll help us capture fragments. And I, we've done a lot of work over 30 years helping people get out of debt. Hold debts. that thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back and we came continue out of debt. This story. Yeah. We're going to continue yeah. this story yeah. and show you how we came out of debt. Practical answers answering your your questions. Coming up on Drenda. That changed my life. In fact, I was so changed by it. We were so changed. We started a business doing that. Yes. We thought because no one knows that. Don't wait for one more collection call or overdue statement. Gary Cassie lays out practical steps to help you eliminate your debt and completely turn your finances around. This special package includes Gary's Revolution of the Mind Finances CD, 30 minutes of life-changing scriptures that will revolutionize the way you think about finances, fear, and much more. The years of wisdom and personal experience Gary shares in fixing the money thing will get you on the right financial track. 
These principles work for Gary and his family, and they'll work for you as well. Call now and you'll get the book along with the CD for the low price of just $24. If there's one book you should read this year, this is it. Go online or call now and we'll rush today's special offer to your door. Your situation is not hopeless. Call now and start putting these life-changing principles to work in your life. Don't put it off any longer. Go to your phone or order at drenda.com. It's time to turn your money thing around. Welcome back. We've got Gary here sharing with us. And uh, Fixing the Money Thing is a great book because it's a practical guide, mm -hmm. but you mix spiritual truths with it. And I love that because sometimes people will go strictly with the practical, which honestly, you can't do this in your own strength. You cannot do it without God. And we were discussing that yes, early in the yes. program. But then there are there's knowledge you need right. that's practical as well. Yes. What is some of that, just a little bit of the practical stuff folks need to understand that's in the book, that they'll get in the book? Well, I'll tell you, to know that you can be out of debt completely, including your mortgage, in less than seven years, usually without changing your income. Mm. Now that, when God told me that, and he began to show me the steps that we recorded in this book, right. yes. how to take someone from zero knowledge of how to get out of debt and lead them through the entire process, that changed my life. In fact, I was so changed by it. We were so changed. We started a business doing that. Yes. We thought, because no one knows that. Right, right. And so the first thing I need to help people understand is that it's possible to get out of debt. Yes, it is. And in less than seven years, and usually including their mortgage without changing their income, because by rearranging your cash flow, prioritizing mm -hmm. cash flow, it, it's, uh, it's just amazing how fast things work. Yeah. We're going to get Amy out in the audience to get some questions from you because I know they're going to ask questions you want to know. But also, um, we've got a couple here that I already uh, mentioned earlier in the yes. program. My husband and I are on opposite sides about money. He's gotten to the point that we both have separate accounts. What do you think about separate accounts? Well, marriage is unity. Mm -hmm. We become one when we're married. And there's, there are issues deeper than the finances in that marriage right. that have to be dealt with. And so that's what I would say to that couple is, you know, there's some distrust, there's some history. Typically, you'll see that on the second and third marriages. You'll see that separate account thing. Someone's right. been hurt, you know. Right. They don't know um, if they can trust this marriage is going to work or correct. not. Are there situations where a woman should protect her finances in a marriage? Well, depending on how dysfunctional marriage is, I would say yes. Okay. I can't, I can't judge it unless I know the situation. Right, right. But the point is, is that... Unity is the, 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 what right. you want to the see. The reason happen. you get married, the reason yeah. you have a yeah. marriage. And really, you don't have a marriage if, you're, if your accounts are separate, if you're going two different directions. That's not really the yeah. way a marriage was intended to be. That's right? right. What about women paying the bills? So many women say, yeah. I'm under the stress of bills. Yeah. Well, women obviously are very detailed. They, they, they're more organized than typically than men are, multitask. So they're, they're very good at that. Uh, the problem men make is delegating it to the, to the wife. So she bears the pressure. So she bears the pressure. I mean, I talk to men all the time. Well, I just give her my paycheck. And I know, woo, red flags, because yeah. paying the bills together is a good thing. So you can be in unity. You can talk about how much you want to spend. Typically, if a man doesn't know what is being spent, he's just out there spending. Right. And so then he just right. leaves her with he the He doesn't bills. feel the pressure yes. to get more money in he the house. He needs to feel the pressure. I know over 25 yes. years ago, I gave the finances over to you, that and it was, was the best day. thing I ever did. It was a great thing. <laughs> and you came through. And yeah. so, all right, we want to get some questions from you now. Yeah. All right. Hi. Um, we have an 11-year-old vehicle in the house that is in great need of uh, being replaced, um, but we are concerned about uh, going into debt again. Um, so the question is, um, is there a thing of acceptable debt? Yeah, debt itself is not sin in, it, in, in a sense being sin. There, obviously, there's times you can borrow something. The problem we have is a lifestyle of debt. Okay? Right. For instance, if I said you can buy a car for $300, you don't have $300 and you borrow that from a friend. That'd be foolish to pass up on a $10,000 vehicle if it only costs $300 and you borrowed $300 from a friend to buy it. Okay, so. There's wise use of debt, but typically most people use debt to live on. 
Right. Consume. For consumer things debt. that are depreciating. It's called consumer debt. Right. You consume what you buy with it. It's gone. You have nothing to show for it. Right. And that's the debt that really hurts you. I mean, obviously, it's better to be out of debt completely. But yes. Uh, if you, you have know, to have a car to get to work, yeah. houses it's better to cars. go. It's better to go with something though that you can afford. Buy a car at least two years old. Uh, you know, shop around, and yeah, you have to go to work. So that's a debt that's acceptable until you get to the place you can start paying cash for a car. All right. Let's go to another one. Okay, what is the best way to teach children basic money management skills? Start them when they're young. And model it, right? And model it. It's yes. all modeling. We had this saying among our kids, Dad, there's a great car. Would you like to have that if it had no payments with it? Yeah. I said, yes. And they'd say, would you like to have that house, no payments? I said, yes. <laughs> they'd always, they learned through our training that no payments. No payments. And they learned, and yes. even today, that's how they live. Yes, I can remember hearing them talking in the back seat. They'd see a fun, yeah. you know, good, great looking car. Would you like to have that, Amy, with no payments? And yeah, Tim would, would say. Little, All right, another little, question. We yeah. probably only got time for maybe one or two more. What do you think would be your number one tip or suggestion about finances and spending? I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, I would live within your means. Yes. That is the number one thing and stay out of debt. Yes. Things are not worth the freedom you sacrifice for them. Yes. Amen. And uh, your basement is probably full of things that you thought at one time would make you happy. Yeah. And you find out that you're still paying for them and you're no more happier. You know, so uh, freedom is worth more than things. That's a saying we developed long ago. Yes. It is, and it's kept us free since Absolutely. we came out of debt. Yes. I love, Gary, um, that you took charge of our finances with my wisdom. You started listening. We started working together because yeah. men and women typically fight each other in this area, don't they? Why do men not listen to their wives? I know all the women want to know that. Well, why, why do they not listen? You, you told them so, right? No. <laughs> well, you have to understand the culture of a man. This is a long, you got about two hours here. <laughs> uh, men are driven by respect. Right. Okay, so... You know, I think how a woman talks to her man with respect, it was, he's, he's, it's his major need, is respect. And if we respect him, you know, we can communicate. But if, you know, if it's a confrontational battle, right. uh, a husband out of respect We've got to work together, right. And so you want to foster communication. So, ladies, when you're talking about finances to your husband, mm -hmm. you need to do it with respect. You need to do it with honor. You need to work together as yeah. a team yeah. because team works. Because we, it comes like you're not making enough money. You're failing. Right. It's basically saying you're right. failing. They're already feeling that way. And that's disrespect. Right. And that's we'll be right back yeah. with some more Hang With Us. Be sure to join Drenda and her guests after the show for an in-depth discussion on today's topic. It's just a click away at drenda.com. For too long, we've taken the back seat to the enemy while the culture has torn our families apart. Our beauty and influence have been manipulated. We are virtuous and capable women. It's time. I'm not going into the battle just to fight. I'm going to win. life isn't easy and becomes difficult to walk alone. Drenda understands and wants to help. That's why she has caring partners standing by, ready to pray with you. No matter what you're facing, there is hope. Don't wait for one more collection call or overdue statement. Gary Cassie lays out practical steps to help you eliminate your debt and completely turn your finances around. This special package includes Gary's Revolution of the Mind Finances CD, 30 minutes of life-changing scriptures that will revolutionize the way you think about finances, fear, and much more. The years of wisdom and personal experience Gary shares in fixing the money thing will get you on the right financial track. These principles work for Gary and his family, and they'll work for you as well. 
Call now and you'll get the book along with the CD for the low price of just $24. If there's one book you should read this year, this is it. Go online or call now and we'll rush today's special offer to your door. Your situation is not hopeless. Call now and start putting these life-changing principles to work in your life. Don't put it off any longer. Go to your phone or order at drenda.com. It's time to turn your money thing around. Gary, you're a great guest. Your material is excellent. I know it works because we worked it together. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, I love the CD also. I didn't mention earlier, Revolution of the Mind about finances. Mm -hmm. There are so many scriptures about finances mm -hmm. people don't even know about. More Listening about to us. Yes, more, more than, than about, about heaven. heaven. Yes. There's scriptures about money because God knows that if, you, if you're serving money, you're so busy, worried, stressed about money, you're not going to be able to do anything much less. Right. Uh, you know, perfect for your drive time. Yes. Uh, you can also get the book with practical. There's actually a plan in here that shows how to get out exactly. of debt step right. by step, yeah, how to pay off your mortgage, does. pay off the debts, pay off the interest, uh, how to stay out of debt. It's very practical, yes. mixed with our story. So, yes. all right, Gary, our story didn't end. We, yeah. we learned to work together. Yes, we learned yes, we, we came out of the debt. Tell us a little bit about Well, we had 10 maxed out went. credit cards, as they, we heard earlier, you know, three finance company loans, IRS debt, family, et cetera. You know, we paid all that off in two and a half years. We hooked into the kingdom of God, learned the principles, learned the steps, and then went on to build, you know, our house, you know, began to start businesses and... Paid off our home. Paid everything off. Paid cash for the land, we built it and on. It's, you know, went on to start companies and, of course, ministries. And now we give hundreds of thousands away a year. And uh, that's a whole lot more we fun. We could barely dream back then that we'd ever make 100000 Now we can give away <laughs> that much. Oh, so there's remember, something huge with that. Huge is, with that. I can remember the day dreaming of having $100. I didn't know anyone. <laughs> uh, I can, yeah, I can remember dreaming that we could put a full gas, a tank of gas yes. in the car because we couldn't do that right. back then. It was two dollars a dollar at a time. Anyone can do it, Drenda. Anyone yes. can do it. We're not anything special. There, the steps are in the book. You can Nothing. take it right through the beginning of the book. Right through the book, mm -hmm. lays it out chapter by chapter how to walk. Gary, that why out. doesn't sure. the bank share with this? Why doesn't the insurance? Why don't companies? <laughs> why don't people know the information? That's do in I this have book? to answer that question? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> because people make money off of our exactly. losing money. Exactly. Right. They're in the business of, of charging interest. They're in the business of selling goods. They're not in the business of slowing the economy down, you know, and say, don't no one buy anything or, you know, mm -hmm. you no, know, the whole country runs on debt. Mm -hmm. Look at the national debt. I mean, right. everyone, yeah. this is a lifestyle of a nation or now it's of a world. It right. is. Yes. Right. It is. And for those who have cash right now, they can come up with, oh, they can huge. grab some deals yes, out yes, there yes, right yes, now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you need to get out of debt. We've mm -hmm. got some tools here for you to fix your money thing. And God wants to help you fix your money thing. Yes, God cares about your money. He cares about anything that pertains to your life. The Bible says he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness right. in Christ Jesus. You just need some answers. You need spiritual answers. You need practical answers. They're in Gary's book. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, honey. Thank, uh, you, thank you for being with us. Love you. Love you. And uh, thank you, audience. Thanks. Have a great day. It's time to build an army, and we're calling all women for this free event, featuring a powerful lineup of speakers to encourage and equip you for the battle. Hosted by Drenda Kissy and Faith Life Church, call all your friends and mark your calendar for this main event, October 18, 19, and 20. With morning, afternoon, and evening workshops, there's something for women of all ages. It's time to go fight win. This has been a paid program sponsored by the friends and partners of Faith Life Now.